because the energy is all around us and energy is all connected to all different types of energy, you can communicate with all types of different things. In your head, you just need to think, uh, please may I turn my energy on or anything like that, a trigger of energy and then just turn it on. And to Joseph. It's quite a warm sensation inside your body, it's quite tingly. And then your subconscious mind kind of realises it. As a kid, I met him down a little alleyway and ever since we've been playing in my head or somewhere else. But he speaks energy, it doesn't speak our language. The rain was tapping and the windows and the wind was banging. Like many children, when I was young, I was very, very sensitive. Even at the age of five, I realized I could perceive the subtle energy. I would look at someone and I would see the energy around them. I could feel the emotions, what they were going through. I would put my hand up and uh, I could hear their thoughts sometimes. I finished my neurosurgical training at Duke in 1987, uh, all of this emergent reality uh, basically emerges from consciousness. Uh, and it opens the door to a tremendous amount of understanding about consciousness and the mind and the power that human beings have over their unfolding reality. Hello, my name is Soraya Kermatasari. I'm president of the Indonesian Community Forum in Australia, and I will be your, your host today, together with David, who will later on introduce himself. Um, good day, everyone, and welcome to this unique, very intriguing uh, interactive seminar about how humans, when they use their full potential, could do things that are seen to naked eyes as impossible. Mind over matters. Today's event aims to, as you will see later, bring you a better understanding of what consciousness is and how it can be utilized to improve the way we conduct our day-to-day -day lives and to a certain extent, help others in certain situations. We will learn that so-called superhumans are not actually that super that we can train ourselves to be one. For those who haven't seen the movie Superhuman, The Invisible Made Visible, it was produced by a researcher, a scientist, by definition, who has been exploring this phenomena for over 15 years. Before we start, I would like to extend our warmest welcome to His Excellency Ambassador Johannes Cristiarto Suryolgo, the Ambassador of Indonesia for Australia, His Excellency Ambassador Irmawan Emir Wisnanda from Merpati Putri Putih Australia, founder of Merpati Putih Australia, and our speakers this morning, Les Tayu Irawan, President of Australia Pencaksila Federation, Hari Cahyadi Wijaya, uh, Officer at the Indonesian Air Force, uh, and Monchu, President of Merpati Putih Australia. Also to Wendy Gallant, Rob Freeman, who will be practitioners um, at a later uh, session in seeing blindfolded demonstration. Over to you, David. Thank you, Soraya. Uh, my name is David Baxana, uh, and I'm your second host for today. Uh, this morning, we will have Vibration Awareness and blind Blindfolded Attractions by Satria and Eddie Passar. I also wanted to welcome our discussants, um, Abdul Razak Osman from Gayong Anak Harimau uh, and Yun Loy Lok from Gracio, Australia, and also Michael Honiger from Domas, uh, out of Self Defence Akar. After the discussions, we will have a question and answer session. For the audience, please write down your questions in the question and answer Zoom form and for the panelists and for the panelists room. You can write your questions using the chat dialog box. 
Thank you. Thank you, David. Um, so without further ado, I would like to invite opening speech by uh, His Excellency Ambassador Pat Cristiano. Uh, if you are already on, please go ahead. The floor is yours. Uh, terima kasih, Bu Soraya. Thank you so much, Bu Soraya. Uh, my good friend, Pak uh, Irmawan Emir. Uh, as I understand, our Consul General in Melbourne also, Pak Kuncoro Kiriwasiso, is also uh, with us uh, following uh, this webinar. Pak Lestayu Irawan, the President of Australian Pencak Silat Federation. Pak Monchu Alamsyah, President of Merpati Putih Australia. Pak Hari Wijaya uh, is one of the uh, speakers. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. May the blessing of Allah Almighty be always uh, upon all of us. Om Swastiastu, Nama Buddhaya, uh, Salam Kebajikan. Good morning to everyone. Selamat pagi untuk semuanya. It's really uh, such a great pleasure for me uh, to be with you all in this webinar entitled Superhuman versus Spiritual Being Energy. Well, actually, I do not know anything uh, with regard to the theme of our webinar. But when, pa, when my good friend, Pa Emir, uh, invited me to give a short uh, opening remark in this webinar, I immediately agree without having a second thought. The reason is because I found it is a great opportunity to introduce one of the oldest form of traditional martial art from Indonesia, namely pencak silat. So, so because of this pencak silat things, then I'm, I'm willing to be uh, in this webinar because to be honest to you, as I mentioned earlier, I do not know anything regarding the theme of this uh, webinar that we are having today. Well, again, about the pencak silat. In 2019, as we all might have known, the United Nations Educational Scientific and cultural organization or UNESCO has acknowledged pencak silat as intangible cultural world heritage from Indonesia. The inclusion of pencak silat as intangible cultural heritage is a proof that the international community recognizes the importance of this martial art that has been passed down in Indonesia for generations and even until today. Indonesia is committed of course, uh, to preserving this tradition of pencak silat not only as a sport or martial art, but also as a form of art and culture itself. And after all, uh, pencak silat is not only about self-defense. Again, it's not only about self-defense, but also an important part of our cultural heritage as part of our identity as a nation. Every region in Indonesia, as I believe, has its own unique variation of its martial art. Accordingly, this shows that they, actually it shows the richness and the beauty of the Indonesian culture along with the values. Fortunately, this notion has also been shared by other people around the world, as number of Indonesian actors also performing Indonesian traditional culture in the form of martial art in international film production continues also to grow. The most famous one is, I believe everybody knows, Iko Uwais, an Indonesian-born actor that has made quite a few headlines by starring in several Hollywood action movies due to his expertise and ability in performing martial arts. Along with other already known Indonesian actor that has brought the world attention and the recognitions towards pencak silat. So it is really a positive reflection of the unique and diverse culture of Indonesia through one of many creative ways in promoting Indonesian art and culture. And as the Indonesian ambassador of Indonesia to Australia, I certainly hope that this would open more opportunity in introducing other Indonesian cultures, not only pencak silat as all martial arts toward the global audience in particular, toward our friends here in Australia. To this theme of the superhuman versus spiritual being energy is an interesting approach toward understanding our potential as a human being. After all, we often heard the common Latin term. I learned this, uh, I, I learned this word since I was in the primary school, 
mensana in corpore sano, which means uh, a sound mind in a sound body. I do believe that the human consciousness, the mind, has the ability to influence our body. This when we have a positive mindset. Hopefully, our body will receive also its positive energy and raise our immune system, which is actually very relevant in today's situation when the global pandemic already affected our daily lives and activities. We have to open to all positive things. It is important to think positive, to talk positive, and do positive also. This is why I'm very pleased that this webinar made possible by the positive effort also, an initiative made by our Indonesian community in collaboration with the Australian community here in Australia. As our close neighbor and a longtime friend with whom we have shared more than 70 years of diplomatic relations, Australia is, is an important partner for Indonesia. Indonesia and Australia have always shared strong and robust relations that have only seen a rise over the past year in particular with the elevation of our relations from comprehensive partnership to become comprehensive strategic partnership that's been declared by our two leaders back in uh, August 2018. One of the pillars of the CSP emphasizes the critical importance of people-to-people -people links or contacts for a strong bilateral relations. So under this CSP, we are determined to promote a contemporary view of Australia and Indonesia in our respective society through social art and cultural collaborations. And the relevant embodiment of such imperative purposes will be reflected, I believe, in this super, superhuman VS spiritual being energy webinar that we are having uh, this morning. Therefore, I really commend the initiative taken by the committee in organizing this webinar. I would also like to extend my highest appreciation and gratitude toward my senior, my colleague, pa, uh, pa Emir, a good friend of mine, for his work and his legacy also in building the block of connection and trust between the people in Indonesia and Australia during his tenure as the Indonesian Consul General in Melbourne. And it is my profound hope that today's webinar will uh, shed light on the various ways on, uh, in unlocking our potential, not only in terms of body, body, but also in terms of our mind. I firmly believe that this webinar will also help promoting Indonesia's pencak silat, not only as a martial art, but also to further broaden and strengthen the connection, understanding, and a good relation on the people-to-people -people level between Indonesia and Australia. Last but not least, let us work together to make this friendship between Indonesia and Australia true and everlasting through your own time and terms. I wish you an, a, a very productive discussion and thank you so much for the initiative. But more importantly, I think, thank you so much for being part of the better relations between Indonesia and Australia. Wish you all the best. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. God bless you all. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. And um, our second speaker for today, I'd like to introduce uh, a very special uh, person indeed, uh, the, the original founder of Murpati Putti in Australia, uh, uh, His, Excell His Excellency uh, Imarwan Amir Wis Wisnandar. Over to you, please. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Pat, for the introductions. And I also would like to thank my good friend, His Excellency Christian Tolgawo, Indonesian ambassador to Australia, Mas Sahrazat Alam Shah, or I should say Mas Monju, President of Merpati Putih Australia, and then Bapak Lee Tayu Irawan, President of Australia Pencak Silat Federations. Mas Hari Cahyadi, Senior Official of the Indonesian Air Force. And also I heard that there's uh, Pak Konjen here, Pak Kuncoro. Nice to, uh, to hear that you are uh, att attending this webinar. Uh, and all, of course, all of the 
speakers and participants attending this wonderful webinar on superhuman versus spiritual being energy. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good morning and selamat pagi. It is a great pleasure for me to be among all of you at this virtual seminar, which is initiated by my good friend, Mas Monchu and his team. I use the term Mas instead of Mr. Because in Japanese, Mas means brother. Now let me introduce myself. My name is Irmawan Emir Wisnandar. Friends call me by my middle name, Emir. Let me share with you my experience with Merpati Putih. I joined this self-defense organization since 1979 during my university, university years in Bandung, West Java. The reason why did I join them? Because I was attracted to the human power in breaking iron, ice, rocks, bare, barehanded by our special military force during the Armed Forces Day in 1976. Then when Merpati Puti initiated to open it in West Java, I joined MP Bandung or Merpati Puti Bandung. The other matters that I want to share with you is during my childhood, I was considered as an asthmatic bronchitis patient. I have difficulty in breathing, especially if I stay and interact with the humidity cold weather. So after I started practicing the breathing exercise technique of Merpati Puti for three months, the illness was cured up to this moment. When I mention cure, it's totally gone. Thank God. I'm honored that when I was posted in Melbourne in 2011, as the Indonesian Consul General, I met Mas Monchu. Together with him, we managed to set up Merpati Puti Training Center in the Consulate General Compound to introduce our traditional martial arts, as well as to promote our national cultural asset that we must preserve. Excellency, colleague, ladies and gentlemen, Merpati Puti is one of the Indonesian traditional martial arts originated from Central Java. It was used and practiced by the staff and knights of the Mataram Kingdom in 16th century. Actually, Merpati Puti is an abbreviation of Mersudi, Patitising Tinda, Pusokoni Titising Hening. In English, it means to seek and find what's right by doing it in silence. The differences of Merpati Puti with the other traditional art of self-defense besides the movement, we are doing the breath exercise techniques utilizing energy from ATP known as adenose triphosphate, whereby the result can be used as a self-defense power, vibrations, and instinct to detect healing and medicine, etc. ATP is actually a chemical biological substance inside the cell through the body metabolic process, the breakdown of ATP to ADP, adenosine diphosphate will become energy. In other words, through MP, through Merpati Puti breath, breathing techniques, when trained vigorously, the muscle tensioning and energy release produce explosive power that MP practitioner use in breaking practice. MP or Merpati Puti is not a magic. We don't need mantra to make what's impossible become possible. MP is a spiritual <laughs> being. MP is a spiritual being energy which can be achieved through breathing exercise and can be explained scientifically. Therefore, it's not those superhuman categories as invisible and impossible phenomena. To conclude, I would like to convey my sincere thanks and congratulations to the organizers and to all the members of MP Australia, 
who has made this event possible so that we can share experiences and some knowledge on martial arts as a sports or as energy booster. Hopefully MP Australia could expedite and its achievement progressively similar to MP USA, MP Netherlands, while at the same time promoting pencak silat to the Australian people. Thank you. Thank you. Next, we will um, watch a, a short video before we go on with our first speaker. Uh, everyone, again, I would like to uh, thank you, uh, His Excellencies Pa Emir and Pa Johannes Cristiato, for the very inspiring opening speeches. Uh, we'll move on to our first speaker of today, uh, Bapak Les. Uh, please go ahead, uh, the floor is yours. Uh, thank you, Busaraya. And uh, first of all, I'd like to um, uh, thank you for uh, with Pak Konjen, Pak Kunjoro, and also uh, Pak Ambassador, um, uh, Pak Cristianto, and um, everyone here. Uh, thank you for joining us here. And um, as as uh, Pancasila has been explained by Pak Cristianto, just briefly. I just uh, like to um, uh, mention uh, to uh, 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 share uh, my experience in um, way of martial art. I grew up in Bandung, and then um, uh, I was uh, training with by my uncles since I was four. I was training in judo, jujitsu, wrestling, and boxing. Then, um, uh, and then I do uh, the pencak silat with Pak Sabdo from. Uh, Radan Sabdo Mulyo from East Java, uh, that's the Lang Pencak Silat. And from Jawa Barat is Pak Tuyo Sutario from um, Aliran Cium Wanara also is Domas. Um, so my, um, actually what uh, my, um, I'm here is, uh, I like to share about, uh, about what, what, what the, um, what would you gain from uh, practicing Panchat Silat? And um, that's a question also about people how long to master the Panchat Silat. And um, how deep can you go into uh, practicing Panchat Silat? So uh, uh, just briefly, uh, we probably can just, I can just talk about explaining about um, about the three fundamental in a martial art 
is that uh, physic, mentally, and uh, spiritualism. So let's say uh, in, in Panchasila, we have the jurus, uh, jurus as uh, the, the, the form. So through the, through the, with the form, through the form, we are building our body. We are focusing about our body. It's about, about understanding uh, our body and uh, the gadget of uh, our sophisticated uh, technology is our body. And um, from there, we, 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 we will learn about uh, 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 the part of our body, like the muscles, the bone structures, uh, all this organ in our body, and we're continually building this physics. We become much more uh, confident. Our body is be uh, uh, experience the health and the pleasure there in our body, and then we uh, from there we continue learning about what we eat and um, the foods that that uh, will, will, will develop this energy and, um, and, um, uh, 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 and also the strength in there. Uh, so uh, that's basically, if, if you're talking about physics, that the form would build up the physically in our body and um, and um, also the coordinations, all that. And um, we are mentally there, we are strong in our thought and uh, belief. And um, we have much more, we have confidence in, uh, in our daily, in our uh, uh, life that uh, would, uh, we, we, we would uh, open up our mind in, in, uh, in, um, in, in, in much more wisely there. So that's, that's part of uh, training uh, the gain of um, what you gain from practicing Panchak uh, Silat or Martial Art there. So from, from, uh, from there is, uh, we're talking about how long we're going to be able to master this, uh, this uh, way of uh, martial art here. Um, uh, there is no time for it. That's we always learn day to day until, well, we can say the minute before we die, we're still learning about our body, our minds, and um, uh, so we will be practicing all this in our daily life uh, from moment to moment in your life. Therefore, uh, there is no time limit. There is, uh, we, we, we will learn and learn all the time. And um, we try to master our techniques, our life, our mind, the thoughts, uh, the, the, the emotion, uh, the, the body and the energy. So we try to bring it into one sort of uh, uh, direction. Therefore, uh, in our moment of life, we have that that uh, uh, that uh, uh, energy that becomes that superhuman. They're able to 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 put all this in one direction. Then, uh, then from there, uh, you know, we 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 were talking about uh, a bit uh, more deeply within ourselves that we were talking about the spiritualism there, that belief that uh, um, you can use this way of, of, of martial art into the way of life. And um, you become more deeper, you, you, you're looking into deep in yourself, within yourself, that's through focusing like uh, what, what we can say a meditations, um, to uh, um, uh, understanding the one that able to command our body. That's that's when we talking a little bit more deeper there. That um, that is 
uh, a part of a uh, way of life in the martial arts. Yeah, perhaps uh, that's uh, for for now. That's how much I can share. But I can talk a lot more to this if we coming back to each one of them. Yes. Thank you so yeah. much. Thank you so much, yeah. Marvis. Um, so for those who missed the first part, Matles is the president of the Australian Pentaxi Lab Federation. So thank you again, Patles. Uh, the next one, I would like to invite Mas Hari uh, from the Indonesian Air Force, who will have um, things very interesting um, to share with us. Mas Hari, uh, if thank you so much, Mas Hari. Um, I would like to um, welcome again Mas Hari from the Indonesian Air Force. He will talk uh, to us about how uh, his capability is being used in the military and uh, how useful it is um, in assisting uh, with the military operations. The floor is yours, Masari. Okay, thank you, Mbak Ya. Uh, first of all, I would like to greet uh, Your Excellency from the Indonesian Embassy, Pak Chris, and also my senior in Mapati Puti, Mas Emir. And there is also Indonesian Defense Atlase, uh, for First Admiral Agus Rustandi, and also for all the panelists and also the attendees. Thank you for the time that you given to me to speak about a superhuman. Actually, I would like to speak about the superhuman first. Uh, the definition of superhuman from my point of view is the capability that is a human head that more than a normal human being, the, where we can do anything like a normal being can do. So in the relation of the definition between superhuman and the military, I think it's really, really relevant because in the military, almost that we do especially in the military operation need more capability or more competency to do to accomplish the mission uh, for example uh, and a few months ago when we have an earthquake and there are some body that is which is buried under the ground then we cannot find it we use one of our capability uh, using our blindfolded and we try to find where is the body. And with the capability, we can find the body. And after that, uh, we finally can dig the, we can take the body and bury it in the proper way. That is one of the example. 
And for another example, maybe ah, when we are having a practice like a, there is a terrorist inside the building and the condition is at night and we are trying to infiltrate and to save the hostess there with our eyes blindfolded and all the electricity is being shut down. We can find out before we are entering the building. We can find out directly where is the position of the hostess and also where is the terrorists and what is the, they're using. So we can get into the building without their, without their knowing it in the condition, very, very dark condition. And we finally can save the hostess and also minimize the victim of those states. I think that's uh, all I can say about the Superman in the military uh, perspective. But yeah, I think that's all about the Superman relation inside the military operation. Thank you so much. Uh, so just out of curiosity, <laughs> will we ever see uh, someone like Iron Man in, you know, in real life? And before all this military action, that's quite interesting question. I suppose we will can see something like Iron Man, but not in the flying part first yet, maybe, but we can break almost everything. Uh, for me, myself, I can break a concrete bar into maybe more than 500 concrete bars by only using one hit. And also I can break, I have a world record uh, breaking an iron bar with using only one finger for about 15 iron bars in one hit. I'm using by one finger. Wow, okay. Well, looking forward to seeing that in real life as soon as this pandemic is over. Um, I suppose um, if there isn't anything else, we can go on to the next um, session uh, with the next speaker. David, over to you. All right, over to our uh, next speaker. We have uh, Pat Monchu, the president from of Maputi, Maputi Puti Australia. Over to you, Pat Monchu. Pat Monchu, are you there? Uh, we have a short video first on uh, Maputi Puti vibration awareness introduction. Vibration Awareness Mapati Piti Australia Special Program. Vibration Awareness is a program that has been packaged to accommodate certain achievement which is useful for any institution such as visually impaired schools, education, cultural, arts, sports, police, special forces and security companies or other martial arts schools. Ancient Eastern knowledge, teach us about energy vibration awareness from generation to generation, not in theory but more in practical way, on how to develop our consciousness in energy vibration processes. Actually our eyes are not seeing object. Matter is purely a transmission of electric energy waves that captured by eyes. Where our brain will create the image of that object. In other words, images of any object does not exist outside our body, but it is in our brain processes, it is exist inside our own consciousness. Mapati Piti have proven the theory. If you close your eyes, you still be able to detect any object surrounding your body. All objects transmits its own energy with various unique density, certain frequency waves, that can be translated by human brain. Mapati Piti Vibration Awareness program is conducted systematically, divided into four phases consist of the following stages, Phase 1, Environmental Detection, Phase 2, Mobility Improvement, Phase 3, Proficiency and Color Detection, Phase 4, Expertise Stage. Okay, that was a great introduction. Yes, how are you, David? Yeah, bagus, Pat. Very good. <laughs> very good, welcome, very good. Welcome to the show. Yes. And um, that was a very good uh, introduction to vibration awareness. 
and yep. uh, which I believe you, you're one of the main uh, teachers of the program. If you'd like to tell us a bit more about it, that would be fantastic. Okay. Thanks, David. And also, I also appreciate uh, with His Excellency, Pa Johannes, and my old friend, High Excellency Ambassador also, uh, Mas Emming. So, in this, uh, because we have already uh, see a lot of superhuman things before, I just want to bring back to our reality about how to become a, just a normal human. So I hope we can uh, bring this discussion, David, if sure. you have any question. But first, what I want to say is uh, this is about, uh, I want to talk about consciousness and human being energy, right? But this is more, I'm not a scientist, I'm just an architect and a programmer in my life. And also I'm a painter. So it is more subjective opinion, okay? So the first thing is, in my opinion, from my experience, if I'm talking about consciousness, it is, for example, if I'm in a meditation state, for example, uh, between my thought, between I always have uh, some thought, my bill, my mortgage, something like that, right? If we do the meditation. But between the thought, sometimes in certain occasion, we have a gap between a thought. Accidentally, we just, we cannot create that. So that gap, that's I my understanding is a consciousness, my consciousness. And then if I want to really realize my consciousness, I have to explore myself uh, about my own energy, not in the theory level. That's why I'm really like about Marpati Puti because I did learn a little bit about yoga, about Tai Chi. There are a lot of things. And it was before I'm just thinking about the whole theory there. I try, I try to meditate in a theory level. I just start uh, more and more become confused, right? Too many theory, too many thoughts. In Marpati Puti, bit by bit, we learn about how we feel the energy itself. So for me, while the first time we, at, in my generation, we don't have the, the luxury of this steel bar or whatever, our teacher asked us to break all the, the ice cube and the stone from the river and at that time, I just felt that that's the first time I felt about my own energy. So this is not about the how to show off that we can break anything, any hard material. That's not the, the point there. The point is I am experience myself about my own energy. And then after that, I start to understand about chakras in yoga. Qi in from the Chinese traditional, not in theory level. I start to felt to feel the area, the vibration. And then after that, I also start to understand about the sound in myself. Also in certain uh, period, if I'm really uh, be like a very uh, stable condition, I also can visualize colors, for example, in my mind. And then after that, I understand why the old, old, the ancient knowledge put all the colors, bring the name of the chakras and everything. So it's open my mind to another 
point of view about myself, about my spirituality. Okay. I talk too much. Okay. I'm, no, I'm, no, that's, that's uh, a worry. David, David, I, yeah, just we that, make this as a discussion and then, yes, please. Sure. Yeah, that's a, that's a very good, uh, you know, understanding of your own uh, experience there. Thank you very much for sharing with our audience today. Um, I guess, you know, um, the people, people of the audience, they, they want to know how, how we can use this, you know, uh, consciousness and um, into, into a reality and how we can use this to um, achieve, you know, things that people, people don't normally, uh, aren't able to achieve. And, and I believe there's um, uh, a number of things that, you know, they teach in Murpati Puti that, um, you know, are quite, you know, uh, you know, very interesting. And, and it's not, not the normal, normal way of, um, uh, of being. What, what kind of experiences have you had? There are a lot. So in this, uh, for example, uh, as you know, uh, we see a lot about uh, the practice of uh, closing your eyes to to see the object or to see the colors, right? Yep. But the thing is, uh, from my understanding, we are not aiming uh, to become expert to seeing the colors, but the purpose of that experience to bring a real experience that light actually is not come from outside. If we are open our eyes, actually we are seeing an illusion of light. Not many people realize because I'm architect, right? If you see the buildings, the buildings line is always distortion to the to the eye view, right? It is not like the square building. So that's the illusion. But if we close our eyes, it means the external object actually inside our consciousness. It actually exists. So if we can visualize a color inside where the light came from. So from my experience, from my understanding, because we are a light being. That's why we can, we can see the color in our mind because we are the light itself. So this is like a proof that external, actually there is no external, it is inside of our consciousness. It is not easy to explain, I understand that, but yeah, that's my understanding. So those experience actually is more to make yourself understand about your spirituality, that you are not only a physical body only, we are also an energy being, we are also a, a light being itself. So very the interesting. whole, the very, whole very purpose, interesting. yes. Yeah. So it's looking at a, a much more deeper understanding of who we are as individuals uh, rather than just being physical, you know, or, yeah. or rather than just being able to see something, yeah. um, you're saying, um, you know, there's much more, there's a much more deeper level of, of understanding of yeah. who and what we are. Yeah. Wow. And um, so, you know, a lot of people want to know, can, can, can you hold up a spoon and bend it with your mind? You know, yeah, that's a like lot. That. That's a very, very good question. The, the answer is yes and no all together. Okay. Okay. This, not the spoon. Spoon, I'm, uh, I'm a skeptic person. I never believe in that you can do that as well. Okay. But let's say there are a lot of questions if, uh, to me asking about you have an inner power. Can you punch a long distance? That's very, another good question, right? So to answer that, it is doable, okay? But it is impossible. Why it is doable? 
Okay, if you do a meditation, you sometimes found a state. For example, in that day, you are very, very uh, stable emotion, right? You don't have a mortgage. You are not fighting with your friend. Uh, you don't have a problem with your wife. Every day, very, very stable. And then at some point, you can build up your energy wave more and more dense, very, very dense. For example, in your hand, you have a very thick vibration uh, wave there. And then you can transform that, become a one line energy wave. Okay. Mm. And then you can just push it. It that the concept of the long distance punch. But it is impossible. Why? If someone asks me to fight, I can ask him, okay, mate, please wait a while for one hour. I have to meditate first. I have to bring my energy first. Nobody wants to wait me for that. They will punch <laughs> me first. You yeah, know what I mean? Yeah, of okay. course. And then the second thing, let's say you already have a density vibration that you can push. Hmm. Once my emotion comes in, once my ego, my, my ego bring up, that vibration gone, bang. Okay, so mm. that's why in theory... So it takes, takes yes. a lot of concentration and a lot of... Of course. Yeah, and, a lot of, um, you know, effort yeah. to be able to achieve yeah. something like that. Yeah, yeah. So, right. if, so if you want to fight in a ring, in an MMA, don't try to do that. Mm. You can get punched on the second by your opponent then. Sure. Because fair, you are... Fair. Okay, that's... Hopefully you're happy with that question. Fantastic. That's great. And we have some um, attractions. Or we have... We have um, I wanted to introduce uh, uh, Wendy and Rob Freeman. Yes. Um, we are, can they, bring... are you guys here to join us? Yeah, we're here. Fantastic. Welcome. And I believe, um, Rob, you're in Florida right now and you're um, dodging hurricanes. Well, yeah. Thank you very much, David, for having us on this show of Manchu. And yes, <laughs> we're leaving on Monday and the hurricane comes through on Tuesday. So fingers crossed that it doesn't come any sooner than that. Yeah, absolutely. And I'm, on t I'm in Ontario, so we're a long way away. So. Okay. Well, welcome to the show. Okay, welcome uh, Wendy Gallen and Rob. Uh, we will just uh, chat a while. After that, I will give the floor to both of you to explain. So for you, the panelists and attendees, this is uh, Rob Freeman and Wendy Gallen. They are the, uh, what she called the blindfold seeing practitioners, right? <laughs> the good thing, they, they found their own method and this is a very, very interesting that uh, they will uh, share to us. Okay. Uh, David, do you have any question? After that, we can just uh, bring the floor to Rob and Wendy. Yeah, that's fine. So, so we can, uh, yeah. Rob, if you'd like to um, start first, that'd be great. Sure. Thanks, David. So for Wendy and I, it all started out with a friend of mine who actually lives in Australia, a good friend, uh, Leonia Pelt. And she sent me a video of her grandchildren wearing blindfolds, seeing. They were playing games, hide and go seek, all kinds of things and reading. And this video went on for two or three minutes. And I said to myself, this has to be a joke. And you know, Leone is a very uh, funny person and she jokes around and has fun. She's a great person. And I thought it was a joke. But then yeah. I thought, why would she take three minutes to make a joke in a video like that? And I said, I wrote her back and I said, is this true? Are your grandchildren really seeing or are you putting me on? Is this a joke? And I said, because if it's true, I want to do it. She wrote me right back and she says, Rob, it's absolutely true. I've been teaching him to see blindfolded for some time now. So she said there's a person in Ottawa, Canada that teaches it. Uh, I talked to my friend Wendy here. 
we both went with two other people to Ottawa and we started into it. Now, the whole thing was, is that I was the only person that saw one color for the whole weekend. Yeah. Wendy didn't even <laughs> see a thing except when no. I was practicing. Yeah. So, um, yeah. Um, it actually, it was interesting because when we went in for the training session, we were sitting there and the trainer looked at me and went, you, you won't be able to do it. You're too old. And so that was my first um, meeting with her. And I, and when she told me that I was like, okay, well, I didn't see anything the whole time for the training until later on in, um, in our bread and breakfast, correct? Yeah, it was pretty incredible. I was practicing and Wendy was following along. It's good to do it with a partner. And Wendy was quietly following along. And all of a sudden, Marcus turned and held a color to Wendy and Wendy saw it. So that was great. We had a breakthrough. From there, Wendy and I started practicing on our own and doing a lot of research. And it really came down to getting totally relaxed mm -hmm. and getting out of your left brain. Yes, and a yes. lot of this is kind of like ideology or representations. And I don't know if it's exactly what's happening, but it's a good way the brain can understand it. The idea is to get out of the left brain, which is intellectual, ego, reasoning, logical, leave that behind and get into the right brain that is more empathic. It's more sensing and all those things. And Wendy, it wasn't long and we were starting to see colors. You started first. And let the, the viewers know how it actually started for you. Well, we, we initially just started seeing colored sheets and we practiced with that and we got to know where the color was. Um, it wasn't just boom, it was a color where it was in that. And then we went on and I'll never forget the first time Rob walked through, like we practiced all three times a week together. Rob would wa walk through and I'll never forget this. He said, do you see anything on this sheet of paper? And it was unbelievable. It was the number five and the number five formed in my mind. And that was the first time, like I was seeing colors, but it was the first time an actual letter and it painted, like it just painted itself on and it just, it just blew my mind. Yeah. It was pretty incredible. It was actually very emotional for both of us when that happened. Yeah. As yeah. much for me as it was for you, as much yeah. for me watching it, as much yeah. for you experiencing it. So mm -hmm. we went on to symbols, you know, triangles, squares, circles, pluses. Mm -hmm. We could see that. Um, I even fooled you one day. I went out in the car. You thought I was nearby. And I drove down to the beach a thousand feet away. Mm -hmm. And you could still see the stuff I was showing. I didn't, you know, I didn't know he drove away. I didn't know he drove away. He just, he said, I'm going out to the car. He said, tell me what color I have on my, on the dash of my car. And I was telling them colors while he's backing out of my driveway and driving down the street. And he didn't tell me that until he came back. So that just, yeah, just another one just kind of blew my mind. Yeah. <laughs> and, and we have it all on video. We record all this stuff. We've got a channel. It's uh, there's a Facebook page, learning to see blindfolded Rob Freeman and Wendy Gallant. Mm -hmm. We have YouTube channels. I think Wendy's yeah. is called Seeing Blindfolded Training. Wendy G, mine is Seeing Blindfolded Practice, Rob Freeman. We document everything we're doing. It's a journey. And, you know, many people are inspired because we're in our mid-60s and we shouldn't be able to do this. By everyone are. else, yeah. Everyone else says that our age can't do it, yeah. So how, we how old were you guys when you first started? Well, in my case, it was three and a half years ago, so I was 64 at that time. All right. Yeah, and I, I'd be 63 at that time. Wow. Yeah, and it's pretty incredible because it's really just quietening yourself down. And we're, you can... Yeah. You we're, can trying, we're, we're trying to tell everyone that anybody, it's possible for anyone. I could, it, the age, that it's a little more difficult because the older you get, the more stuff you have in your mind, you know, work and everything. But if you quieten it, you can do it. Yeah. Fantastic. And, and, uh, it, and Wendy has lately been having several more things happen. Describe what's happening, Wendy. I get glimpses of it now and again, <laughs> but you're having it happen even more. Well, I think um, I know uh, uh, Mas Manchu was talking about um, your consciousness and that. And um, 
And when when COVID came along, we were we were practicing by Skype. And um, this one, it was wild for me. Rob directed me over to his house, directed me up to his stairs, directed me into his a room where he was practicing. And he said to me, I'm walking across the room and I'm holding a colored piece of paper. What is that color? But me, I saw him walk across the room. My consciousness was there in his room, watching him go across and I said, is the, is the sheet orange? And he said, yes. And, um, but the thing that the color wasn't what got me, the, the thing that got me is that I was in his room. I saw him walk across. Fantastic. You, you saw a lot more than you bargained for. <laughs> well, yeah. And <laughs> I, like I now, it. I now know I I've, I've said this since we started this, cause we've been doing it for so long that we're getting more and more and more, but I now know any, anything's out, anything's possible. Fantastic. Yeah. Anything possible, yeah. I'm sure there's a lot of listeners out there that are uh, that are feeling a little bit skeptical, and and we have um, some attractions that mm -hmm. we'd like to uh, to, to show uh, from Satria and Eddie Passa. Are you guys here now? Yes, that's David. Oh, hello. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. I'm already downstairs. Fantastic. Um, so, are you ready to go? Okay, Mr. David, I will uh, give me two seconds to prepare no myself. No worries, no worries at all. So, Satria is actually uh, Masari's son, is that right? Yes, that's correct, but yeah. Uh... And how, how old is he? Uh, he's now in the fifth grade of elementary school, 10 years old. Okay. Okay, uh, I will try to explain before he's doing the demonstration. Today he will do the demonstration how to walk uh, through some uh, part of uh, uh, using a bicycle. And the first step, uh, I will put this blindfolded into his eyes. And I will make sure that he's not cheating on me by picking up from under his nose. <laughs> okay, uh, now I will tell him, uh, I will put, now uh, he don't know where I will put the bicycle. I will put the bicycle before he ride the bicycle. <coughs> I will put it in random places. To find the bicycle first. Uh, by uh, evading the Okay, so to find the bicycle, cari sepedanya. After you find the bicycle, the bicycle move on the obstacle. Okay, you now can move around the obstacle. If you can ride faster, it's up to you. Lanjut, lanjut. Concentrate, concentrate. Ngebut ke sana, ngebut aja lurus. Ngebut dulu, nanti kamu baik lagi lewat obstacle-nya. He may be a little bit nervous because still child. <laughs> Faster, faster.
faster faster ngebut ngebut <laughs> ngebut lagi nggak apa ngebut Uh, can you get down from the bicycle, turun dari sepeda, sekarang lari, melewati obstacle-nya itu, pas to the obstacle, lari. Do not hit the obstacle. Lari, jangan berhenti sampai dibilang stop. Lari. Lari, lari, lari. Now, kolek sekarang ambil, ambil semua obstacle, di, diambil, dikumpulkan jadi satu. Kolek all the obstacle and make it into one pieces. Kolek all the obstacle. Ambil semuanya. Find the other obstacle and collect it into one. Cari yang lain, find another one. Lebih cepat lagi, you can do it much faster. So he's trying to find all the obstacles and collect it into one. He's just practicing for about uh, less than one year. Cari lagi yang lain. Lebih cepat lagi, faster, faster. Find another, cari yang lain. It is something very easy when we do it with our eyes, it's not blindfolded. But when our eyes are blindfolded, it's quite difficult, maybe very difficult. We are also uh, give a practice for this kind of method to uh, blind men since they are uh, when uh, even for the person is blind since they are but I try lagi, do lagi, do lagi, two more, two more, faster, 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 tenang, focus. Terangin lagi, terangin lagi. 
Make it more bright, more bright. Last one. Find the last one. Concentrate, focus. Okay, now run, bring it to me. Run towards me. Run, 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 run. <laughs> run towards me. Run towards me. <laughs> Give me the obstacle. Okay, thank you. I think that's all for the demonstration for Satya. Thank you. Oh, wait. I will open his eyes. Okay, thank you. Fantastic. Thanks for the demonstration. You're welcome, Mr. David. And we have a, a second uh, demonstration from uh, Eddie Passar. Are you there, Mas Eddie? I have to say that was a, a really incredible um, exercise and so good um, uh, the, the, the kids are learning so young. It's no wonder they become so good. Incredible. Well done, Satria. Do, do, we have, Thank you, uh, do we have Eddie here? Okay. Yeah, you're live, Master Eddie. Okay, all right. Please stop the share screen. Thank you. Mas Eddie, I believe you have not started your screen, so we are unable to see you. Hello. Okay. Uh... Okay, uh, let's we start the last interaction by Eddie Pasar and with Daniel Boros. Okay, um, thank you very much, uh, Park David. Um, hello, Masedi. My name is hello. Daniel. Okay, so <clears throat> I'm going to. Uh, to draw something and uh, Masari, you're going to draw it on your side. Uh, Mas Edi, uh, Mas Daniel mau minta Mas Edi untuk menggambar. Okay. All right. Um, start with something. Let's see. Mas Daniel mu akan mulai menggambar Mas Edi. Silakan. Mas Edi apa kabar Mas Edi? Baik, fine, fine, fine. Oh, bisa bahasa Inggris Mas Edi gaya. Little little I can lah. <laughs> <laughs> Little, little, I can, ya. Yeah. Oke, okay, Mas Daniel. Oke, 
Mas Daniel udah gambar, udah taruh di layar. Coba Mas Edi detect. Could you just please detect the the drawing by by Mas Daniel? Mana? Kok nggak ada? Kelihatan nggak? Belum ada gambar ah? Oh wait 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 wait. Kelihatan nggak? Mana belum. Nah, oke. Okay. Siap. Saya, saya ikutin ya. Iya. Jangan ngintip ya, Mas. Oke. Okay. Ngintip apa? Ngintip udah kenceng banget ini. <laughs> Don't cheating. Hmm. Don't cheat, Mas Edi. Will be embarrassed with Satria. Mau <laughs> banget Ed. Nah, It. kenapa? So for all to all panelists and attendees, this is what we call as a remote viewing. So Mas Edi Pasar will try to uh, detect the drawing and he will try to draw by from his side. Okay. Yep. Ini gambar saya. Oke. Diangkat sedikit ke atas sedikit lah. Nah gitu ditaruh. Oke okay. that's good. Oke. Okay. Yep. And Mas Daniel, you try to write a letter or something? Uh, yes. And Mas Edi will read it. Mas okay. Edi, Mas Daniel mau nulis kata-kata nanti Mas Edi baca. Oke. Okay. Moga-moga bahasa Inggrisnya enggak enggak susah, Mas Edi. <laughs> The little can lah ya teh. Oh, itu, eh. ya. itu mah kan kata orang pertama setik setik lah Bahasa... oke okay. oh that's showing the the reverse ang yes that's it blue yeah. red green black Yeah, one more, one more color, Masari. Red, A, green, black. One more. A, blue, and yes. red. A, green. A, red. Yeah. Black. Right. It is not K, K in English, K. but K. Uh, yeah, K, green. Green. <laughs> That's right, Master uh, Eddie. I uh, try to to write that he can spell, for example, whatever. Okay, all right. Hang on. Can I can I wipe out that whole picture or? No, it, yeah, you wipe the whole picture and try to write a letter. A word. Okay. <clears throat> but, but not a difficult English because Eddie cannot speak English, so yeah. Okay. Just right. a very, very simple. Little, little. Oke, okay, Mas Edi, udah ditulis, tinggal baca. Sama, ya, baca dulu, nanti sebutin warnanya, warna spidolnya. You read it first, and then after that you explain the color. Mm -hmm. Material? That's right. 
That's right. M, blue, A, black, T, red, E, red, R, green, I, black, A, black, L, black. Okay, that, that was a, a bit tricky because I put the the blue and the blue. black together, but yeah, it was blue. L, uh, L blue. L is blue, yes. L, uh, black and blue. Yeah. Okay. And now I think Mbak Lorraine turn. Mbak Lorraine. Sekarang Mbak Lorraine mau uh, pick warna, Mas Edi. Okay. Bentar, bentar. Wait, 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 wait. Kelihatan udah, Mbak. Mbak Loren udah taruh warnanya. Purple. Yellow. Closer to the camera, Mbak Loren. Yes. Red. Red. Uh, 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 orange. Orange. Mm -hmm. Green. Blue. Red. Okay, that's good. Gaya bahasa Inggrisnya mau saya di ya. Ya kan little-little. <laughs> Oke, okay. thank you very much Mbak, Mbak Loren. <laughs> Oke, okay. now we back to our... Uh... Thank you very much, uh, Mas Eddie. Thank you, thank you. That was fantastic and, and, and really uh, incredible. Thank you very much for everybody. Amazing. Uh, for, for that matter. Um, Now we just wanted to welcome um, our audiences to to write something down on paper, and um, and, and to add to the uh, the attraction. Does anyone oh. would anyone like to? Do they do they need to write it on a piece of paper and just uh, type it in the chat, or because if that is the case, they will need to um, turn on their camera. For anyone who would like to join, uh, we have uh, Caroline Corey, uh, the producer of the Superhuman. So, welcome to Caroline Corey. Oh, that's amazing. Welcome. So, do we have anyone from the audience? who would like to give it a try, maybe write something in a piece of paper. I can probably do that. Can I do it? If yes, there so, isn't anyone? Yes, of course you can do that. Okay, I will write something. We would like to offer actually, because maybe someone think that we oh, always pre-arrange something, oh, something okay. like that. Okay. Yeah, I will do it. But yeah, yeah but it. you can try from your end. Okay, okay, I'll write something. Ready, stand by, Mas Edi. Lagi. Nah. Okay. Okay, here goes. Oh, sorry. Oh, I have to write it the other way around. Hang on. Mas Edi. Yep. Nongol lagi itu Mbak uh, Soraya mau naruh yeah. tulisan. Jadi Mas Edi baca. Oke, okay, I'm gonna bentar, bentar. Jangan kabur dulu. Ya. Yeah. Bentar dulu sebentar. Ya. Yeah. Nih. Ini nyala okay, ini. Mana videonya belum nyala? Makanya. <laughs> <laughs> Oke. <Okay. laughs> Udah. 
Lihat, kelihatan nggak Mbak Aya? Bentar, Belum. bentar, bentar, mesti di spotlight dulu biasanya. Nah itu. Ini tulisannya terbalik nih. Oh, oke. Okay. I'll have the other one. <laughs> <laughs> Enter. That is correct. Wow. Okay. I'm, I'm going to want to well. you're blindfolded, yeah? You can't see anything. I don't know. Maybe he's looking from the... <laughs> maybe it's a good idea to, you know... Um, Take it off and just show it to the camera, so that we can all see that it's it's really you can't really see anything, you know. Ready, my read what is written by Mas David. Okay. Ma, Mas Edi, Mas David, nulis, bentar, bentar. Yep. Bisa baca nggak? Bisa. Sombong. Itu tulisannya pencak silat. Pekarus. Pencak green silatnya red. Oke. Okay. Fantastic. Ed. Si Lora itu Soraya itu mau lihat dibuka dulu matanya. Terus pasang satu-satu supaya mereka lihat sendiri. Jangan okay. pasang duluan. Oke. Okay. The step from the first time when you put the, eye, the blindfolded us that you are really blindfolded so that you can't see anything okay yeah maybe show it to the camera show it to the camera from yeah from your end okay <clears throat> so yeah. as opposed to double mask he's wearing double blindfolds Yes. Because <laughs> here in Indonesia, we when we go out now, we are required to wear double masks because of COVID. <laughs> yeah, but still, for the skeptic, it is not easy because sometimes they are always thinking maybe they are uh, the hole in within something like that. Yeah. yeah. But that's the that's why. Uh, You have to do by yourself, experiencing by yourself, and then you uh, can understand about this thing. Okay, uh, Mbak Aya, after that we can uh, uh, continue with our uh, next session, Mas David and Mbak Aya. Sure, so um, next up we'd like to welcome our discussants. Um, we have... Uh, Uh, Mas Mick and uh, Pak Razak. Uh, pa sorry, sorry. Pak Razak, he can't do that. He is working today. So, apologies uh, from okay. Pak Razak. So, we have only Mick and Yun. But before that, thank you for Mas Edi Pasar for your attraction and Mas Satria as well. It's very, very great attraction. Thank you for both of you. Yeah, I was going to say uh, because... Um, Thank you so much again, Pak Edi Pasar and uh, Dek Satria, ya, yeah, because he's um, in his fifth grade. Uh, actually, Mas Hari was telling me earlier that um, he could even play video games um, uh, blindfolded. So, you know, that could be something that we could explore, explore later on because that's that's amazing. Hello, um, all. We, do get, we just got message from Caroline Corey in the chat. Maybe you can read it. Um, let's see. Uh, she doesn't have a microphone yeah. and yeah. Oh yeah. yes, you did enjoy the 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 film Wait. very much. Brilliant. I think uh, wait wait. I think he can start the. So, 
Shall we go on? Oh, thank you for Carol and Corey to attend for this because your uh, film inspired us to make this webinar to make uh, to promote about what you already exploring in your uh, documentary film, and we really hope that the science uh, community scientists will start. Uh, to explore this for more for education purpose, for how we uh, able to bring this method from the childhood, from elementary school up to the high school. So I believe we can be uh, happy if we can do that. So that's why we will promote this method around the world. Okay. Okay, now we have our uh, discussions today. Mbak Yun, Yun Loy, Locke, and Mick Honegger. So, this is the floor for you. Thanks, Mas Monchu. Um, uh, I'm not sure who's, who can start, but it's basically, um, I, I just have some uh, statements and questions. Uh, from what we've seen so far. Um, uh, I'll just basically introduce myself, um, <laughs> a practitioner of Penchak Silat, so just full disclosure on that, and um, been training with uh, Butlez Irawan for many years and um, have been part of the Penchak Silat community um, for, for, for a long time. But uh, um, my, my interest in this is, is, has come through my own practice, but obviously this is a new perspective from Merpati Puti, which is a, uh, a different style of Penchak Silat to what we practice, but a lot of the fundamentals and philosophy is, is consistent. But, you know, being in the modern world and, and being, you know, heavily influenced by the scientific perspective on the world growing up and through education and um, living in the, in, the, in the times we do, to have exposure to these types of practices in the modern world is sometimes either viewed as archaic or um, redundant or, or uh, superstitious or, um, uh, you know, with a lot of skepticism um, surrounding it. And, and um, so I come with that perspective as well as being a practitioner and having an open mind. Um, but my, my question is, or statement is in terms of our abilities as superhumans, it seems that since the enlightenment period, you know, with, with, with technology and science, we've tried, we've more or less seems that we've outsourced these abilities to creating external technologies that do the same thing. The irony is we we're conversing from multiple parts of the world right now on, on, on devices that would have seemed like magic a hundred years ago. Um, but, people have been practicing it from what we're saying, practicing uh, the meditation, the breathing, the remote viewing, the, the ability to refine your senses, not just your, your primary senses, sight, smell, touch, sound, but the other senses that come from the in, internal perspective of the human um, that's been practiced for very long. Is it that we're just um, externalizing those abilities with the technology we're using, or is it the other way around that there'll be a convergence of technology with these abilities? Is that, is that something that's being explored or discussed? Or it, I'm just curious about that, those two connections. And Pat Monchu, as you're involved a lot in technology yourself, um, is, does that interest you or have you got a perspective on that? Yes, uh, <clears throat> okay. So, because I'm also a programmer myself, and I'm also really uh, a little bit understanding about AI, artificial intelligence, deep learning, and machine learning myself. What my dream, actually, I'm talking, this is about in martial art, right? Uh, my dream is, rather than we uh, put both people attack each other inside the ring, okay? If someone can develop, for example, like a real virtual opponent, that's a really, really brutal one, 
For example, you you are using your virtual 3D glasses. It's like playing a game, but you a real a combat with your enemy, virtual enemy who really bring the knife. You really because today we cannot do that in real version, right? You cannot bring someone with real knife and then uh, stab your stomach, for example. It will hurt. It no against the law. Okay, so next, I believe five years or ten years, we will have a real virtual opponent. That's a make you as a martial artist real have an experience because virtual opponent is really fast and real with knife and blah blah blah. So you can but on the other side, it is more human actually. You are not hurting someone, but you are really develop your martial art skill. That's that's uh, one explanation. Now I just want to talk another another thing here. What we lost today about martial art, if we back to the traditional martial art philosophy, actually martial art is not. To fight, build your ego, so whatever. Even 100 years ago, martial art is only a basic step to understand more about your spirituality. That's why 100 years ago, if you learn martial art, you are not allowed to use it. Even you are not allowed to tell your friends that you are doing martial art. You are not allowed to do any violence at all. You only allowed to use your martial art in case you are really in danger situation and you have to kill someone or you to get killed, to be killed. That's all. But the problem is if we maintain the old philosophy, the knowledge will be gone. That's why in modern, modern sport, martial art is become sport. You want to achieve to be like you are a number one. You are good. You are something like that. So this is the way how we find the win-win solution. We still keep the traditional philosophy. So everybody understand about martial art. It is not for the violence. It is for your spiritual ex journey. But on the other hand, how we can still uh manage this as a modern sport but to be honest in my age i never like anymore to see boxing in the ring someone get knocked out something like that okay for me it is i don't know i don't like it anymore i am a martial artist but i don't like it anymore right now what is the purpose you become a winner, but someone hurt? That's the modern concept, right? But that's the way we live in today. If we are not doing that, nobody interests anymore with a martial art or pencaksilat. So that's our homework. We want to introduce pencaksilat, a traditional martial art, with still keep the philosophy, but how we still manage become for the young generation understand and willing to learn it. So I don't know the answer yet, but yeah. Sorry, I'm talking too much. Okay, I give to. <laughs> okay. Thanks, I... thanks much. Thank you. That, uh, yeah, that, that's, that, that we can talk about this, this subject forever, um, but I'll hand it over to um, uh, Yun Loy. Yep. Thank you, Masmik, um, and hello, everyone. And um, yeah, it's a very interesting webinar we have here today because uh, I am from the background with sports science study. So this is really something different for me, to be honest. And uh, for most of you here, um, I can see that you have lots of experience with this Penchak Silat from very young age as well. When, whereas for me, it's uh, quite a new thing for me, just started like a few years ago. So um, it's, it's really interesting when we relate this to the 
philosophy of it, um, like in terms of like how uh, we can look into the spiritual of it. And uh, what attracts me is actually on the focus, the focus uh, within this art itself. So um, this, I just bring this up based on my personal experience. I think it would be easier to relate things all together with a real experience. Back in 2016, uh, some of you might be around in Sunshine Coast uh, for the Australian National Panchat Silat Championship. So I myself is a participant uh, in the Juris Tungal competition. Um, halfway through, I actually twisted my knee. And um, I think if at that point of time, if I don't have that strong mentality and the spirit in myself, uh, someone would have stopped at that point of time. But I think I didn't focus uh, my attention on uh, my injuries and the pain in my knee at that point of time. So I just, you know, finish it off, oh, even though it's not perfect. And um, there's a lot of factors uh, in place at that point of time as well. So um, yeah, with all these spiritual uh, components within this art, I think it really builds someone out um, in this kind of environment. So uh, yeah, I don't know what, what do you think? Is that also part of the thing that we can actually instill in like the younger generation um, of how to uh, put our attention away um, and focusing it to the end to achieve what we actually target for? Masari, maybe you can uh, explain or what, less? Yes, um, yeah, I remember that, uh, Yun Loi, when you joined in um, the competition and you injured that, um, your ankles. And it is true, like what you mentioned about the mentality. If you, if you see like the MMA, so for instance, one day some people, uh, you know, cut the face and they still there, they bleed as anything, they're still fighting there. You know, the, the pain is sort of, uh, uh, it's nothing to that because the mind, the thought is, the, your energy is, 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 is driven, focused in that one direction. Like for instance, that uh, we that the world championship last time, uh, one of the Thailand um, uh, competitor, he 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 dislocated his shoulders, but he he just keep going, and then uh, that the round stopped, uh, and then the second, the third round, he's still going. At the end, with that kind of uh, mentality, that uh, the thought, the mind, the body, the the emotion and the energy, he just focused in that one direction. That's what I call uh, at that moment, he is a, he's a superhuman that he able to continue and he wants the, 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 uh, the competition. So uh, therefore, that's what it is about um, what my understanding, uh, um, uh, practicing, uh, when people practicing martial art, first they learn about oh, they're thinking about self-defense, and then uh, it's about about power. That the one power they like to be that superhuman. They and they like to prove it themselves by, you know, uh, oh, let's you know, I'm, I'm a strong man. I'm, and then you try it at, on the street, you fight in there, and then they, you want to prove it again how strong you are, and then you join this competition and you want to prove it again you're coming into the MMA but that's that's all uh, uh, it'll be an end of of your uh, try to prove that way your your muscly parts and things as you get older you know you that's that's what we're talking about you're coming into more deep inside looking between your thighs 
you know, that's we coming into that spiritual part because many, many, uh, lots of uh, sportsmanship or people, uh, you know, uh, uh, showing that way at the end of the, uh, at the end of the uh, 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 time, it's, you know, by the time you were 40 or 50, you cannot compete anymore. So you, you find you lost somewhere there. That's a lot's happened to many martial artists, you know. So that's, they, they, that's the when they, they need to go within themselves, coming into that part and, and put it that all together. That's, that's when, that's when you, 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 you understand, fully understand a lot more about, about, uh, about how you command your body. That's what it is, and become more, more interesting in your life. That's when all the martial art, uh, uh, especially in in Punjab martial art, uh, uh, that very strong drive that my my mentor always uh, put it in there. So the art itself is just to build you become uh, understand your body, understand the gadget of your body from from the outside to the inside and how to command that gadget because we are the most sophisticated gadget that you know we can eat banana turn into into a body it's alive where you know your mobile phone don't but where that's when many people's like when you uh they they're more focused into technology than into their own spirituals and their bodies and things like that so that's a lot more that's a lot more in there. So the more, uh, the more, the more you uh, want to know about all this, the way of life in martial art. So that's then, then you you go deeper. You open your mind a lot more. And there's a lot, a lot in Indonesia itself. Until today, there is still uh, people very deep in inside that are. I always, when I go back to Nisa, I go to the mountain claim meeting these people. And my last mentor was Sumadi from Solo. And then he showed it to me that, that it, it would only happen in your dream. <laughs> but I, I can witness this in, 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 in this reality that, that uh, it's unexplainable. So that there is, a, there is, there is exists in this uh during this lifetime in here so we can talk a little bit more deeply there between uh once you enter into that uh site the one the one that um sam mentioned that is that spiritual part i call it the one there so the one with this body and then you know that's how you go deeper and deeper that's a way of practice of this focus on this yeah yeah so I think, uh, yeah, uh, I can talk a lot more further, getting a bit more. So, uh, yeah, if, if um, I, I can pass it on to uh, someone, probably can add more what I can say here. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks, Pat Les. And um, does anyone have any final questions for the uh, panelists here today? Otherwise, uh, we. Uh, sorry, guys, I just uh, got in. I'm a bit late. Can you hear me? Okay. Yeah, we can hear you fine. Excellent. My my uh, good brother from Melbourne, Danny uh, Daniel, uh, got me into this, but I was a bit late getting in. I'm sorry. I missed uh, most of it because I've been on the road all morning. And but uh, I'd love to hear more, and I'd love to be kept in the loop with uh, what's been spoken about and. Uh, are very very interested in in the whole conversation will this be uh will i be able to watch this recording or has it been recorded will i be able to watch what was discussed this morning yes yeah. you can uh go to www.pb.bus it is a uh, live at the moment yeah and also uh, there is, if you go to the uh chat uh, section there's a link there that will um, let you watch it later on. Uh, let me just get that because I've, I haven't got a note, but if I can just, what was the site again? I'll record it for memory. Uh, what was the site to go to again? www.vibi.buzz. 
Okay, and then what do I do there? Oh, you just click, you just, you just uh, copy and paste that onto your browser um, and it should take you there and you will see the, the live video stream. Perfect, 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 guys. Uh, my email, I've dropped my email. It's ambassadorul at gmail.com. Uh, please keep me in the loop, guys. I'd love to hear and know more about, about the subject. Thank you. And thank you to everybody who's joined us today. Um, it's been really, you know, eye-opening from many different levels for, for everybody who's been watching um, thank you all for your participation and we look forward to, you know, seeing you out in the community and uh, receiving your, your questions. Um, uh, we want to keep this uh, conversation open and um, look forward to hearing from you. So thank you, everybody, for today. Over to you, Soraya. Do you have any final, final words for the webinar today? Yeah, well, I would just like to thank you again, everyone, and the panelists and the organizers um, from VV Bus. What an event. I hope, I really hope it was helpful. Uh, it certainly was quite an eye opening um, um, seminar for me. Um, and I really hope, as it does to me, that it will help you gain a deeper understanding of this. Uh, you know, incredible potential that humans have, really. And I think, um, David, correct me if I'm wrong, it isn't about having so-called superhuman strengths, uh, but to have the ability to improve our day-to-day -day lives in, you know, in certain situations. You know, for example, when technology fails us, you know, maybe uh, somewhere along the way could help, um, you know, detect someone uh, who has COVID, for instance, right? Um, and also, um, you know, you know. so that, that means like, just based on what we've seen and heard so far, it allows us to help others really when needed. So again, thank you very much for, uh, for everything, uh, everyone, all the speakers, all the discussants, and especially the audience, uh, all His ex Excellencies, uh, uh, Cristiano, who I believe have already left the room, but again, thank you very much for the inspiring opening speech, and um, for Amir as well. Um, so thank you. Back to the organizers.